Buenos dias, what's up everybody? We are officially two weeks out from the 2022 CrossFit Games Open. With that going on, I was just reminiscing a little bit. This is gonna be my 11th straight open. I started competing in 2012 and I'm looking at my profile right now. In 2012, I took 188th place in the world. The next year I bumped up to 56th, the next year 20th, then 16th. In 2016, I won the Worldwide Open. Year after that, I took second, then 25th, then 60th, then sixth, and sixth. That was last year. This year, we'll see how we do. At the end of the day, it really is just a qualification for the next stage, which is quarterfinals. I don't even remember the numbers, but there's a pretty big pool that you have to make it into in order to qualify for quarterfinals. Quarterfinals is a couple weeks later, smaller field, then qualifies for semifinals, and then that qualifies you for the game. So hopefully this will be my ninth straight year of qualifying for the CrossFit Games. It all starts with the Open in two weeks. Today, we're gonna do an Open style workout. We've got two eight minute AMRAPs with a little bit of rest in between. Some movements we've seen in the Open, some that we haven't, but you never know. And afterwards, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Open, some tips and tricks. Like I said, it's gonna be my 11th year. Hopefully, I've learned some stuff over the last decade that can help you guys. But thank you once again for being here. I hope you have fun. Let's get it. The workout for today is an eight minute AMRAP going up by threes of sumo deadlift high pulls at 135 pounds for gentlemen, 95 for ladies. That's a movement that I don't think has ever been in the open, but could make an appearance. They had it at regionals one year. And that is paired with going up by one every round ring muscle ups. So you'll do three sumo deadlift high pull, one ring muscle up, six sumos, two ring muscle ups, etc. As far as you can get in eight minutes, and then we'll rest for two minutes. We have another eight minute AMRAP, same format, going up by threes of front squats at the same weight, and bar muscle ups going up by ones. Is it? So feet have to be outside of your arms, and then you just have to get the barbell above your collarbone. Some competitions, you have to have your elbows above the bar, some you don't. I tend to, if I'm not thinking about it, have my elbows low. But maybe today I'll try to focus on elbows high just to be safe. For those of you guys that don't know, this is Aaron Helmley, one of my best friends, my training partner, coach here at Peak360. You saw us just do that workout together. We're gonna talk about that workout a little bit and then we'll talk about some past open workouts that we've done, yeah. reminisce on the good ones, the bad ones, maybe give these fine folks some advice going into this year's open. So, starting with that workout, two eight minute AMRAPs. How is it different from what you expected? First one, with the sumo to the pipe poles and the ring muscle ups, was way less breathy and I guess less fatigue of the muscles over time. Right? Yeah. You could move steadily through the sumo to the pipe poles, you were never going too fast there, and then take a breath, unbroken sets in the muscle ups, the volume never got too high. I agree. All in all, it felt like an easier yeah. overall workout even though I personally got less reps. Did you, did you get more or less on the first one? Less. Less, um, less on the first one. No, more on the first one. More on the first one. I got less on the first one, but I think it's just because of the nature of doing singles on the barbell, which you're right, also did make it kind of easier. You could just do one rep, drop, do one rep. Whereas when we got to the front squats, I, I felt it immediately. Like I did on the set of six, and I thought, oh wow, this is gonna be different because you're doing big, unbroken sets and even if you break them up you're still doing bigger sets than just the singles that so we were doing on the sumos so that one was definitely more metabolic yeah, for me for sure and you come on the second one off the bar muscle ups right away and you like have to take a breath before you touch the barbell for the front squats yeah, whereas coming off the ring muscle ups you can immediately just touch the sumo to the right away pulls, start them get that going yeah do you usually go into a workout like that and this obviously translates into open workouts as well with a plan of how you're gonna break them up, or do you kind of just wing it and figure it out on the fly? I always have a plan. I always, in my mind, you know, over time as you do more and more workouts, you kind of know your body, weights, what you can do, reps, what you can do, but it doesn't go to plan that often. 
you know, you have an idea, okay, I'm gonna go unbroken through this number of reps, and then I'm gonna start to break it up. And then you get there and you're like, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. And then you start to break it up as you go. So being flexible to be able to move your reps around throughout a workout is a big deal. I find, and I would imagine that a lot of you guys maybe are this way as well, during an open workout, I put a lot more thought yeah. into what my plan is and what the workout is gonna feel like versus a training workout. I, on this one, to be honest, I did not even consider the front squat strategy. Once I got into it, I was thinking, oh man, uh, these are gonna get into bigger sets. I'm gonna have to break these up eventually. I'm gonna pick a number on the fly. Whereas in the open, Sometimes I'll have it dialed down not only to how many reps I'm gonna do, but at exactly oh what time yes. I'm supposed to pick up the barbell. Yeah. I remember the workout that was uh, yeah. double unders, toe to bar, and then a squat clean ladder. Do you remember that? We've done it yes. two times. I do remember that, yep. And I had it mapped out with a little whiteboard in front of me where the first set at the 135 bar, I was doing one rep every three seconds. The next set, I was doing one rep every seven seconds. So definitely, I tend to put more thought into the workouts that matter more. Yeah, when you're competing, looking for the best score possible, you wanna have the best strategy, the most efficient way to do it, whereas in yeah. training, it's not quite as important. You know, you're trying to get a stimulus, trying to obviously do the best you can in training, but you're not looking for like those second details yeah. that matter on a leaderboard. You often probably wanna practice what you preach, but maybe in training, it's more important to like push the limits, maybe get yeah. to failure in training so that you know where those limits are, and then when you're doing the actual open workout that counts, you have those limits in mind and you can stay just below them so you don't hit that red line in the middle of it. Exactly, that training versus competing mindset that we talk a lot about, you know, in training, you know, to push yourself further so that you kind of know your thresholds, know your limits. You can't compete every single day you come into the gym and over time, that's something that like, athletes have been doing it for a while, learn more and more. Totally, it's been, this is gonna be my 11th open, I've already said 100 times, sorry for repeating myself there guys, but I'm still learning things. Speaking of the open, and looking back, there have been 10 opens so far. There are anywhere from like three to six open workouts every year. Let's call it an average of five. For the last 10 years, there have been somewhere between 40 to 50 open workouts. That's a lot. That's a lot. Some of them have been repeats. What are some of the ones looking back that are your absolute favorites and that you performed really well on, yeah. and then some that like you never ever want to do again that you got crushed by and just have the worst memories of? And I remember the 20 minute AMRAP we did where it was dumbbell thrusters, toes to bar, and double unders in yep. short reps. Yep, yep. I don't exactly remember. They all were like very fast where you're getting a lot of rounds. That was either 2019 or 2020. I think okay. 19. Yeah and I love that style yeah. where it's just like you flow. The yeah. reps aren't so high, you know you can hold on and go unbroken for the most part. It's just like how consistently can you move? That's like yeah. very much my style. I love workouts like that. I agree. Chipping you away. feel like a machine. Yes. Like nothing can stop you. No, you're just like yeah. boom, 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 boom. And then you don't even feel it. You know, towards the end, you can, like we talked about, pick a number on the clock. Every 30 seconds, I'm gonna do a round or even break it down even more, like you said, rep to rep. And then the 21, 18, 15, 12, 9, 6, 3 thrusters, burpees over the bar. Mm. That workout demolished me the first year it came out, maybe 2016. Yeah. I was up in Jacksonville on spring break with my buddies in high school, and we like dropped into the gym and did it, and it was hot, humid, That's gross, funny. and I just got obliterated. That workout I have a very, very fond memory of because it was the one that sealed the deal for my open win in nice. 2016, and it like, I was in the lead, I just needed to do well enough on the last one. They announced that. I felt pretty confident in yeah. it. Burpees and thrusters are two good movements for me and I executed really well and I remember finishing and like knowing that I had done it and so it was this like big celebratory moment yeah. even though it did hurt it, like crazy. Very painful, I don't care who you are, if a first day CrossFitter or one of the fittest people in the world, yeah. it's gonna be extremely painful. So another super positive open memory for me, in 2013 at regionals, I was in a qualifying position and I got lit up by the 2115 deadlift box jump workout. Mm. It was deadlifts at 315 and box jumps in the 30 inch box. I was pulling like round back from the very beginning, ended up blowing up, finishing in like last place, dropped out of contention, and so that was heartbreaking. Realized that deadlifts were a huge weakness for me, so I trained them a lot. And then in 2014, I believe, one of the first open workouts was a deadlift box jump ladder. It was a little bit of a different format yeah. where you did 15 box jumps every round and then the deadlift number, I think, went either up or stayed the same and then the weight increased every round and it finished 
with reps at 365, which is pretty heavy at the end of a workout when you've already done a ton of deadlifts. And I remember finishing that blowing my mind with how well I had done. I finished like top 10 in the world, yeah. whereas I had taken close to last in the world at regionals recently. And so that was like a moment of overcoming a huge weakness for me. And that sure. kind of gave me the confidence that, all right, I can work hard at the stuff I'm not good at and maybe yeah, be able to qualify. That. And that's the cool thing even about the open for a lot of people is we see the repeats of the workouts like yeah. year to year. Where see you how usually, much you progress. Yeah, you know, like when that 55 deadlift, 55 wall balls, 55 cal row, 55 handstand push it workout came out. Yeah. That first year 225 was a tough deadlift for me. Every yeah. rep was a single, like you said, rounded back, just a brutal workout. The next year we redid it and it was an exponentially better score totally. across the bottom. You know, so it's cool to see how you can progress every single year. Even yeah. if you don't necessarily always see, oh, why should I sign up? You know, it's like you just get a good marker year to year of how you can improve. Yeah, for sure. And I think we're not paid by CrossFit at all. That would be nice. But um, there's no reason for us to encourage anybody to sign up aside from the fact that we have as yeah. many times as we've done it. And it's been a positive experience every year after the fact of obviously while you're in it it maybe doesn't feel so positive but like five weekers yeah yeah the community element of it though everybody comes together it's a very fun five weeks you really feel like a family within the gym people are supporting each other you're helping your friends redo and film and yep. judge and i don't know the, the open every year really i think sparks people's enthusiasm for that crossfit for game sure, season yeah. the context we're just doing some weightlifting. Got a handful of single power snatches. Somewhere between 185 to 205. I've actually never been a great power athlete, like my power lifts, which just means you're catching with your hips above parallel, so not going into a squat. My strong suit, but feels pretty good here, and I'm just above parallel, so. I'm gonna work on trying to catch this next one as high as I can. Since we're talking about the Open in general and you're an awesome coach, what are some tips that you have for people doing the Open this year? Whether it's super general, just talking about like setting up your cameras and your timers or very specific like movement things or mindset things, what do you got? What comes to mind? One big thing I think that a lot of people, especially in the general CrossFit population, could take away from that I see at peak all the time is learning burpee efficiency. Mm. So what I mean by that is knowing your engine on a burpee and whether you should step up with one foot, step down with a foot, can you take off with two feet, you know, those kind of things on, because we always see burpees, burpee box jump overs, burpees over the bar. I think there's been burpees in the open every year. Every year. Some and sort. I, you know, and if you can just clean up a little bit of those efficiency things, it makes it feel a lot smoother, you can keep your heart rate a lot lower, your muscles feel a little bit less fatigued, and over the course of a long workout, uh, they can, they can play a big yeah. role in how well you do. That's an awesome tip. I think one of the biggest things that I see on that, and I can show you guys later, is usually when people are jumping up from the bottom of the burpee, you'll see people jump their legs up into a squat and then have to squat out of the bottom. Yep. If you think about when you're down on the ground, lift your chest up, pop your hips and try to jump your feet as close to your hands as possible with your legs straight. That way you can just kind of stand up out of the bottom rather than having to squat up out of the bottom. It saves a lot of energy. That's a, a good point and something a little more specific. I would say one of the open tips for me as a competitor trying to qualify I know that's not everybody out there but there are a good amount of people that are going to have to video their performances have a, a certified judge validate their scores that can get really hectic and messy on game day I know we've had times where especially when you're trying to coordinate like you and three other people are gonna go at the same time and you set your camera up you have it recording you do your hey no Olsen Southeast region whatever it was that you had to say and then somebody else sets their camera up wrong or they run out of memory and then their judge has to go do something. I have very vivid memories of like the stress yeah. of the minute before the open workout starts of being like, oh, this is not ideal. I should have started five minutes ago. I, I, my camera died. Like, So my advice there is try to minimize that stress as much as you can. Don't freak out about it, but like, the night before, if you can clear a little bit of memory on your phone, make sure you bring an extra timer with you, have somebody already set up ahead of time to judge. That's happened to me before where it's like, 
10 seconds and I look around and I'm like, I don't have a judge. Can somebody judge me run over real quick? Yeah. So set up as many things ahead of time so that when you're warming up, all of that is taken care of and all you have to do is do what we do every day and yeah. train and at three, two, one, you just do your thing. Moving on, little clean complex. It is 10 sets on the 75 seconds, so minute, every minute and 15 seconds, doing one squat clean, three push jerks, one split jerk. Starting at 225 and going up to 275. Obviously, this is kind of my theme always. Work hard, have fun, like yes. try to crush it. Give as much effort as you can to each workout, but make sure you have fun with it. If you don't enjoy it, you're not gonna sign up next year. You're not gonna be motivated to come in and do things to work on the skills that you maybe weren't as good at. Um, I know some people are really hard on themselves. They set these yeah. expectations, and if they don't meet them, the open just becomes this really disappointing comparison metric and the leaderboard. Don't make it all about that, you know? Make it about having the best time that you possibly can, supporting your friends. You but wanna do 11 opens, you know? Like longevity in the sport. You gotta be having fun, enjoying what you're doing. If year after year it just causes a ton of stress, anxiety, you hate it, you're never gonna do it, you know, for five, six, seven, eight, nine years, you know, however long you think you wanna you know, continue in the sport. Uh, so that's a very important piece. So find yourself a friend like Aaron, Work hard, have fun, kick some booty. We'll see you guys on the leaderboard and back here on YouTube. Peace.